Bun venit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Ziua se apropie. Vă prezentăm astăzi un material realizat de Billy Graham Evangelistic Association în care se vorbește despre situația critică de la granița de sud a SUA, unde mii de migranți preferă să fie prinși și trimiși la închisoare numai să scape de ororile la care sunt supuși în propriile lor țări. Asociația Billy Graham a organizat un turneu evanghelistic în orașele de la graniță ca să aducă speranță în mijlocul oamenilor, să le spună că nu sunt singuri și că Dumnezeu îi iubește. Vizionare plăcută! At the southern border, the situation continues to escalate. Unlawful crossings have reached a yearly high. In the midst of this growing humanitarian crisis, officials are facing increased pressure. Local law enforcement is being put to the test, and this crisis is taking a huge toll. Living in a border town brings a lot of fears. I think it's like a big emotional roller coaster. These are real problems. We're in a, an unusual time. You look at the number of people that have died at the border. It changes the way you think about what's happening. Here in the border region, they're suffering all around. The vast majority of people are in desperate need of hope. The greatest need of the human heart is spiritual. The turmoil that happens in the world definitely impacts our community. People all around us are hurting. I can see it in their eyes. They're looking for some type of answer. It's for such a time as this that we're here today. The only hope for this world is God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Franklin Graham. People from many different backgrounds, political, spiritual, whatever the case may be, they all agree that our southern border is in a crisis. The needs there are incredible. The physical, the spiritual, the, the emotional needs, they run deep on both sides of the border. And it seems like every day there are new reports that bring greater concern and that should prompt us to pray. The only hope for this border is God. We're getting ready to go to the border to take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're gonna go from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the Pacific to preach and proclaim the gospel. People are hurting, people have lost hope. Many people don't know where to turn. Across the country, cities are grappling with an influx of asylum seekers. They're part of a new wave of thousands amid a surge in illegal migration to the U.S. Officials tell us the influx of migrants are from countries far beyond Latin America. Here at Eagle Pass, they've apprehended people from over 150 nations. There were over 300,000 illegal crossings at the southern border in December, and a record 3 million migrants crossed the border in the last year. The frustration is, is there's no place to put these people, and there is a concern for their health and their welfare. Record numbers of migrants have holding facilities bursting at the seams. Recent inspections have found 900 migrants housed in spaces that are only supposed to hold 125. It wasn't like this in years past global migration patterns are changing and it just really speaks to sort of the volume of desperation in so many of these other countries. What's he saying? What he's saying currently is on the other side of Mexico that they, they beat them, they rape the women, beat the kids, the, they abuse everybody, that essentially that of Mexico is death and here at least they're in jail. Many of these migrants are running away from bad situations in their country. But there's also a criminal element coming here. Many Central American migrants are being influenced by smugglers and their rosy pitches of an easy journey north. Cartels are really taking advantage of the human trafficking scenario. People owe the cartel and sometimes that fee is extracted in heinous ways. If you can't pay, you're going to work for them, and in, in, in a lot of cases, it's worse than anything they were running away from to begin with. It's uh, massively taxing the Border Patrol agents. 
The amount of suicides over the last two years is unprecedented. Border Patrol agents are some of the most compassionate people I know because they see things in the job most Americans will never see, things that are very tragic. That does affect people as you could imagine it would. The desperation on people's faces strikes home. I've been through depression. I am still through, going through depression, anxiety. I failed. I contemplated suicide. You know, I lost 30 pounds, 40 pounds. I'm like a crazy person in the street. People are looking for hope and safety, and they're desperate enough to literally face death. This situation could seem hopeless, but it's not. I believe in a mighty God. He's an awesome God, and he will provide. In the midst of this chaos, we minister to these people. We provide hot meals. We clothe them. We, we actually embrace them. We gather them sometimes in prayer. We do this all in Jesus' name. Amen. When the CEOs come forward and offer a place to stay, a roof, and food, it changes everything for them. No one can offer them anything better than the love of God. They serve us a meal. They've given us shoes and a new jacket. I'm very grateful. It meant so much to have someone tell us that God was with us and that he never abandoned us. This is the most encouraging day I've had in a long time. What looks like chaos, it's basically an opportunity. We need people teaching others the love of a true, merciful God. I'm so grateful for the churches, the pastors, the Christians that are there working and trying to make an impact in the name of Jesus Christ. And we want to help them, we want to strengthen them, we want to be an encouragement. And so we're coming not only to preach and proclaim the gospel, we're coming in the name of Christ and we want to be an encouragement to strengthen the body of Christ. Coming up, people all around us are hurting and we don't have the eyes to see it. We have to go outside of the church to engage with people. We want to reach the city, but how do we do this? We can't come down here and preach and sing and perform and think that this is a gig. This is a holy mission. What we're facing on the southern border touches many areas of life. There are repercussions from this crisis that are affecting people in many different ways. These issues are just physical problems that can be solved with more money or more resources. There's heartache here. There's pain that leaves an everlasting mark that only God can solve. My name is Myra, and I'm married to a Border Patrol agent. My husband's been a Border Patrol agent for 16 years. I think the work that he does is, is heroic. A Border Patrol agent is the front line, the first line of defense for our country. I don't think people really realize how much work they do, how many lives they rescue, how many times they've been there for another human being. I think it's like a big emotional roller coaster. You're dealing with really bad guys, just saving a three-year-old. It could happen in one shift. My name is Diana, and I'm from Michoacan. I never thought my family would go through something like this. My husband, he was kidnapped. He managed to escape 
The same day he was abducted. But the following day, two other people he was with were found dead. We left the place that we were hiding. It's been a very difficult journey. We have struggled a lot, especially my children. They're young, so they still don't know what the future holds for us. Our agents are humans. They're fathers, they're brothers. It's an emotional job, and it takes a lot to control those emotions, place those emotions. But as a Border Patrol agent, that experience is hard to let go of for my husband. It was too hard for him to process. I believe it's too hard for them to process that they suppress that emotion. They have to handle it themselves. So that does something to you. Okay, well, what happened at work? I would tell him. And nothing. He wouldn't talk. And he wouldn't talk and he wouldn't talk. My perspective completely changed when in the middle of the night he's dreaming and he's like running. He's fighting and I could tell he's dreaming so heavily. And just out of nowhere, he like screams in, it's just a terror, like it's a completely different tone. It didn't sound like him. And he's screaming, La Nina. It was so terrifying. And normally I'm like, hey, calm down, like, wake up, like you're screaming. No, it scared me so bad. It was like the worst case scenario was happening in his dream and he's screaming out loud. And it broke my heart. It was so heartbreaking for me not to be able to do anything for him. But we've invested in this job. You gotta do it together. When you hear the stories of the people that are down there on the border, I'll tell you what, it kind of grips your heart, it kind of breaks your heart. And there are people around us every day that are in desperate need, okay, desperate. And people are discouraged, people have lost hope. And that's why it's so important that we take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for those that are searching for life's answers. We've been praying for a long time for an awakening in our city. Living in a border town brings a lot of uh, fears. We see a lot of gang violence, substance abuse, depression, anxiety. Because of all the challenges that we have in this border town in our community, I know that the answer is God. It's for such a time as this that we're here today. We're in an unusual time. There are problems that we are facing today like we've never faced before. People just trying to get by. I can see it in their eyes. They want more. I think there's a sense of urgency because of all the challenges that we have in our community. Jesus Christ came for the weak, he came for the poor, he came for the one that was broken. That's what he came for. And in this short time that we are here, how can we get the gospel to everyone? We need to go out into the streets. I believe the southern border is the neediest part of the United States right now, but it's an opportunity. There's power in the gospel. It can change, no question, not only individual lives, but it can change a community. In this world, as troubled as it is right now, we're ambassadors of the gospel of Christ. The way we're going to be an ambassador for Christ is to speak. We have to tell people 
the question is, how do we do it? How can we now put this into practice and evangelize at a bigger scale? We need this, but we don't know where to start. As I saw what was happening on the border, I just felt God put a burden on my heart to lift up Christ in the middle of this crisis and make Him known. So we're going to 10 cities along the border to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to start on the Gulf Coast, down at Brownsville, Texas, all the way to Chula Vista, California, on the Pacific Coast. And we'll see many thousands of people with their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. When I heard about the Franklin Graham tour coming to Chula Vista, I was fired up. I think it's great, and I want to be a part of it. I've been praying, Lord, the community, Lord, the city, how do we do this? And, and that was my prayer. So when I see the tour coming to Brownsville, I'm like, God, you know where we're at. We felt it was God saying, it's time. gathered here in the night of prayer and worship to pray for the Frontera Tour. Anybody can throw up some lights and some sound and bring some artists out, but to have the church equipped and prepared and prayerful, that's why this is months in the making. The impact that it has on the churches is, is beautiful because we get to come together for trainings, we get to come together for meetings. I see people worshiping in Spanish and I see people worshiping in English. We're believing that this year, in 2024, both sides of the border will become ablaze and on fire for Jesus. And the importance of holiness. Seeing this Frontera team all together, I said, Lord, you have chosen us to go and preach your word. And there is nothing that could hold us back but our fears. And I said, change that for me. Help me and this team that you put together. Make a difference. We're getting ready to start this border tour. I don't think it's ever been done before. So to do this, we've got to have God's help. This is a holy mission. Yeah. And we're on the purpose of this is to preach the gospel, to let people of this border know that God loves them, cares for them. Glad you're here. Welcome. The day is here, the big day that we've been praying for. I believe that great things are going to happen today. Por favor, ayúdeme a darle una fuerte bienvenida esta noche al reverendo Franklin Graja. This is my first time to Brownsville. Esta es mi primera ocasión en Brownsville. This is a beautiful area. Esta es una área muy hermosa. We want to take just a couple of minutes tonight. Queremos tomar unos momentos en esta tarde. If you don't remember anything else. Si no recuerdas nada más. Remember this. Recuerda esto. God loves you. Dios te ama. This is the culmination of a, a great deal of prayer, the long-anticipated God Loves You Tour. Is everybody excited tonight? This message is gonna be blasted. God loves you. By coming, you're saying to God, I'm sorry for my sin. I want to turn from my sin. This is the greatest decision that people will make their entire lives and it changes everything. I'm so excited to be a part of this and I'm passionate about seeing people come and know Jesus. And that is why I do what I do, why Franklin does what he does. Come on, if you're gonna give some praise, give it to Jesus tonight. I get to sing Part of this song in Spanish, it's Hosanna. Muestrame tu corazón, todo lo que soy por tu reino, Dios. Contigo quiero estar por la eternidad, which is 
break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom's cause as I walk from earth into eternity. And it's just my prayer and my heart tonight. And I feel like God's already doing that. That's why I apologize for the tears and the emotion because um, Jesus loves people. He came for people. And Jesus died on the cross so that each one of us could be reunited back with our Heavenly Father and have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. You have decision cards in your bag. Make sure that you get that decision card filled out. The decision card is critical because once those cards have been filled out with names, the card is going to go to a pastor for following. We refer them to a church who has a heart for people, who loves people and loves God. I'm not able to give you a formula for this. We're just going to have to depend on the Holy Spirit to help us. We'll have to depend on the Holy Spirit. We're here to see the Lord work in people's hearts, change through the gospel, and then these guys are going to be used of God to disciple these people that are saved. And that's why we're here. We want to be a church making disciples for the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that God sent His Son on a rescue mission to save us from our sin. Jesus is not dead. He's here in Tucson tonight. You don't have to stand before him in judgment, but you have to come to God his way, and that's through the cross of Jesus Christ. I just pray for them as they take the stage sure tonight, that your name is glorified and that you prepare these hearts yes, God. to come forward tonight. All of our preparation, prayer, training, meeting with pastors is directed toward that 15 minute period when Franklin says, if you don't know Christ, be done with your sin. Everything that we do is directed toward that one moment. The Bible says all of us are guilty of sin. Y la Biblia nos dice que todos somos culpables del pecado. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Y la Biblia dice que la paga del pecado es muerte. And you say, well, God forgive me. Y preguntarás, ¿y Dios me perdonará? Yes, he'll forgive you. Sí, él te perdonará. He'll forgive you tonight. Él te perdonará en esta noche. The gift of God is eternal life through pero, Jesus Christ our Lord. Pero el regalo de Dios es vida eterna en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died and shed his blood on a cross for you. And he's calling many of you here tonight. Él te llama. Come to Jesus tonight. Dear God, Querido Dios, I'm a sinner. When they heard the word, they were repenting there. I'm sorry for my sins. It was so amazing. I couldn't hold my tears. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. Tonight, I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. This is a miracle, them going forward. I had a lot of troubles with addiction. God's always going to be there for you. So that's why I'm accepting Jesus. 
Me tocó mucho lo que dijo Franklin, por eso pasé a, a frente. Cuando la veo bajar, mi corazón se llenó de gozo. No lo puedo explicar. No estaba esperando que el Señor le hablara a él. Jesus has forgive me and oh, I have the Holy Spirit that I could talk and tell him, you know, protect me, help me. God will forgive you no matter what. It feels like amazing. And just having peace, peace with God. People not only received Christ, but are now committing their lives for change. A lot of us have work to do now as we will continue to reach out and we'll continue to disciple. The churches have been strengthened. The pastors have seen a demonstration of the gospel at work. So it's been a demonstration of God's power, the Holy Spirit power, all the way up the board. Through the Pantera God Loves You Tour, God opened a door. It's reassurance that God is hearing us, that He loves us. God has always been with us. God has always provided what we need, and this is part of His provision. I want to say to all of you that have been watching, thank you for watching. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. But remember to pray for the border, for the churches that are there, the Christians, the pastors, those that are trying to be the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for them. Thank you, and God bless you. Partner with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in the mission of proclaiming the gospel. Misiunea ziua se apropie să încheie aici. Vă mulțumim pentru atenție și vă dăm o nouă întâlnire săptămâna viitoare la aceeași oră. Sunt Codruța Burghelea și vă spun la revedere. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvânteze!